top headlines for the week ending May 4. GPHC short of staff and medical supplies. Persons need to be trained before DNA testing could be done at the forensic lab. Two-year National Road Safety Action Plan launched. 13-year-old girl disappears on Labor Day. Unions and government goes head-to-head -head at May Day Rally. Mother of the teen who was stabbed to death says she will not put her head on a block for him. City Hall starts drainage works to combat the May June rain. Food and Drug Department warns citizens about false labeling on products. Welcome to MTV News Updates Week in Review for the week ending May 4. I am Trisha Ramlal. Good afternoon. The Georgetown Public Hospital Corporation is in shambles as it is being plagued by the lack of nurses and doctors to attend to patients. What is scarier is that the major health facility is out of basic drugs such as aspirin. The Parliamentary Sectoral Committee on Social Services on May 3, 2017 visited the Georgetown Public Hospital Corporation in the presence of the officials from the institution and media operatives. This move was facilitated in an effort to examine the operation, policy and performance of the institution to ensure health care is delivered efficiently. Following that process, recommendations will be sent in a report to the National Assembly to streamline ideas for the Ministry or engage in debate. The visit to the healthcare institution unearthed a host of deficiencies. In the accident and the emergency unit, human resource shortage was immediately pointed out by National Director of the Emergency Medical Services, Dr. Zulfi Karbox. If you check in about an average of 200 patients, you would need a doctor to patient ratio. Each doctor would see about 10 patients per shift, right? So if you're looking at a, a, in terms of staffing for 24-7, we would look at 30 doctors minimum to staff the emergency department. We've currently lost quite a few of them, so we're done because of um, getting into other programs and being transported out to other regions and, uh, and personal reasons. So we currently don't in terms of doctors, we have currently 16 doctors in the department. He also emphasized on the issue of overcrowding, which has been compounded by loads of referrals from other peripheral institutions. As I said before, we have to take care of the entire city and at, uh, the most important challenge for us is the overcrowding. Right? Because uh, at, at it stands at, at most point in the week, we have more patients that we actually have beds in terms of taking care of. Another worrying issue is the maintenance of equipment which has been halted as a result of the lack in expertise. On the other hand, the pharmacy displayed a marginal supply of medical supplies as was confirmed by senior pharmacist Janelle Welch. According to her, the supplies have been out of stock for the past three weeks which are usually procured on a three-month basis. We have ibuprofen, we have Panadol, we have Diclofenac. Right now we don't have aspirin for injections, we don't have um, immunoglobulin, that's an important one. Um, right now we don't have um, medazolam. Other challenges pointed out by the staff includes duration of procurement of medical supplies, updating technology for manual proposals, among others. Sandy Ramutar for MTV's News Update. A two-year National Road Safety Action Plan was on Wednesday, May 3, launched to implement measures and to reduce the amount of road fatalities. Details in this report. Commissioner of Police David Ramnarine says in light of the road carnage, the force has been re-emphasizing the five Cs when using the roadway. He claimed that some motorists have no regard for the lives of others. A compassionate, caring and concerning appreciation for fellow road users is absent. Minister of Communities Ronald Bulkan noted that the country's problems are not about the statistics but about the enforcement of the traffic laws. He pointed out that a number of drivers have no regard for pedestrians who use the road crossings. Yes, road users must demonstrate greater responsibility, but our traffic authorities need to rigorously enforce our traffic laws. Improvements in the enforcement of our traffic laws will act as a deterrent to the careless and reckless use of our roadways. Minister of Public Infrastructure David Patterson says the ministry has constructed footpaths in Wolford Avenue and then there will be overhead passes that will be constructed along the east bank of the Mararo. Patterson noted that with these facilities in place, it will arrest the growing road carnage. The installation of raised pedestrian markers, street lights and traffic lights 
the placement of speed ramps, particularly schools, particularly near schools and hospitals, and perhaps most importantly, promotion of road safety through education. Minister of Public Security Kamraj Ramjitan says the government has to take courage and boldness in the face of criticism to enforce traffic laws. He highlighted the campaigns which were implemented since he took over the reins of the ministry, which have had a good effect on the populace. He pointed out that the restriction on the importation of used tires would be another way to reduce the amount of road fatalities. Minibus driving real bad and the passengers would never tell the minibus to stop and I'm going to report you. Driving real fast and they wouldn't say a word, even taxi drivers. Family members in cars, private cars. Know that the fellow got 10 drinks in excess of what he should have been drinking. And yeah, man, drive. And then when he drives, drive a little more fast. It's taking too long to reach home. We are the ones at fault all the time. The subject minister says traffic officers have to be better able to enforce the laws since many drivers who are involved in accidents are under the influence of alcohol. Ramjitan is proposing to disqualify your motorist by suspending his or her driver's license until the matter is finished in the court. I have started the process that if you are charged with causing death by dangerous driving, that we are now going to, under the section where the minister has the power, to disqualify those charged during the period of awaiting their trial. Uh, disqualifying them from driving so we do a period of suspension and that will have an effect I'm absolutely certain Nikhil John the reporting for MTV News update the forensic lab will not be able to conduct DNA testing until training of personnel and equipment is installed this is according to Public Security Minister Cameron Tramchitan Minister of Public Security Kamraj Ramjitan says before the equipment is installed, personnel will have to undergo training. He noted that this training will be crucial to the facility in terms of providing the best testing of samples taken from a crime scene to be processed for court cases. The American Embassy is helping me in getting that process fast track. But at present, no, I do not think by the end of this year that can happen. DNA is the highest grade of investigation at a forensic level and the chemicals, the processes inside of a DNA lab is very high quality. You do not want interferences with the samples and then the integrity of the, the items that are, came in as exhibits. You have to have very strong structures and we are now training the forensic lab technicians for all of that. Then you have to have the actual equipment. We, we don't have that equipment there yet. Ramjitan noted that the lab will have to do some restructuring to store samples in years to come. Because you could have all of that coming in and then one good lawyer demolish a case presented in court and then no juror ever believe that that DNA sample testing was proper and is dead, you're dead, if you understand what I mean. So I want to go cautiously, make sure that everything is in place. The air conditioning unit, the, the, the thing that will keep the samples for years and all of that, the refrigeration units and all of that before we then. And that should take place probably next year. The forensic lab has been conducting other testing which has been able to solve many of the crimes being committed on a daily basis. It has been useful to the Ghana police force in its fight against crime. Nikhil John, the reporting for MTV News Update. A Leonora West Coast Damara teen has disappeared without a trace, leaving her family frustrated as the search continues for 13-year-old Shamina Aziz. Yet another teen has disappeared without a trace, leaving her family in utter confusion. Missing is 13-year-old Shamina Aziz, who left her Leonora home on May 1 with the intention of visiting her aunt in the same village. However, she was never seen by her parents again. 
because Minnie Moro went to work and she left to go buy wine and she aunt. And she aunt sent she at Madino to buy food. And since she left, she never returned back. According to her father, Amir Aziz, his daughter was last seen around 12 hours at May 1, wearing a black dress with pumps of the same color. While the father indicated there has been no arguments at home, he's pleading with the teen to return immediately. The distraught father, who could not say what had occurred, is optimistic that he will see his daughter again. I just want to see let she come home, even if she gone with a boyfriend or whatsoever, let she just come home, don't be afraid. I like to say, Shamino, please come home. We love you very much. A missing persons report has since been made at the Lunora police station and the matter is currently being investigated. Anyone with information that may lead to the discovery of Shamina Aziz is asked to contact the nearest police station. Sandy Ramutar for MTV's News Update. While there was unity among unions at the May Day rally, the unions used the opportunity to bash the government. They boldly expressed the challenges they faced. On May 1, 2017, a large number of the labor force gathered to reflect their struggles, challenges and sacrifices through their respective unions. Representing the Federation of Independent Trade Unions, Guyana, Komal Chant urged workers to defend, protect and advance class gains in an effort to build a country that will ensure rights are upheld. In addition to this, he advises that workers express their concerns over the nation's economic fortunes, which he claims is in a tailspin. It is disheartening for us of Pito to record that the prom promise of a good life has so quickly re been replaced with a depressing state of affairs. On the other hand, Minister of Natural Resources Raffle Trotman says unions should not cling to outdated ideas and notions that are evidently failing. Instead, he believes those bodies should see the bigger picture and trust for betterment for workers and the nation. No longer, therefore, must we consider the struggle here in Guyana to be between us versus them, but rather, no, it must be us and them together. So there is need for a re redefined relationship between workers, between their representative unions and government. Led by Hubert Nathaniel Critchlow, known as a father of trade unions in Guyana, the 1st of May was celebrated in then British Guyana in 1930. The participants, who all wore red shirts and white pants, displayed a representation of workers fallen in past struggles. Sandy Ramutar for MTV's News Update. The mother of the teen who was stabbed to death on Saturday night says she will not put her head on a block for her son. The teen who attended Covent Garden Secondary was allegedly stabbed to death while at the school's concert. Details in this report. During an interview with News Update, Beverly Yearwood says her son was at a concert when the stabbing took place. Brian Yearwood was allegedly stabbed by another teen while at a school concert around 21 hours. Yearwood says she was made aware of the incident when one of his friends came and told the family at their Golden Grove residence. The only thing that this boy keeps saying is that they don't kill Brian, they don't kill Brian. And I say, who killed Brian? What happened? And I tell him, come, come, sit. Tell me what happened. Tell me they don't kill Brian. I said, I said, we mean they don't kill Brian. Where is Brian? He said, Brian is um, at the hospital. And, and he's already dead. That's all, that's all the boy keeps telling me. The teen's mother said that even though her son had a good personality at home, she cannot swear for him. I don't know, I don't know my son, if he, when he go out from the home, if he's a different person. I can't tell you though. All I could say that from the time Brian going up in my home, he was the nicest person you could, you could ever want to be around. But I won't swear for Brian. I can't say Brian go out when, when, he, when he back is like when he was, you know, when he's out. Meantime, this newscast visited the school where the incident took place. According to the deputy headmaster, Michael Prasad, the student was involved in a brawl in Grove about three weeks ago. Prasad says following the conflict, the victims had planned on attacking Yearwood whenever they get the opportunity. 
The deputy head teacher stated that the now dead teen has several complaints against him in the school. The teen leaves to mourn for siblings, mother and father. Nikhail John, the reporting for MTV News Update. In their bid to prevent substandard food products from being released for sale on the local market, the Government Analyst Food and Drug Department is again advising importers to ensure products imported into Guyana are properly labeled with all the necessary information. Director of the Government Analyst Food and Drug Department says the session was facilitated as the department is duty-bound to ensure illnesses are prevented. Those present were also advised on the key pointers of sanitation, contamination and cleanliness when handling food. You might be less than 40 persons here, but your contact is to more than maybe 40,000 persons living in the Georgetown environs or going to purchase food from your establishment. Reflecting on a burden of illness study conducted by PAHO WHO in 2009, Cole says many uncertified food handlers were identified. As such, the session was convened to bring awareness to the mishaps which are possible to occur during food handling process. So I'm there to, the first one is keeping it clean, preventing cross-contamination, keeping food at a correct temperature. Um, the fourth, I believe, is um, using clean source of um, water and using um, sources of food that are safe or clean. Cole says another reason to convene such a session is to ensure burden is not placed on medical health facilities when illnesses are contracted through food stuff. Sandy Ramutar for MTV's News Update. The Georgetown Town Council is on target as work has commenced in a number of low-lying communities as the city anticipates the May-June rainy season. A number of teams consisting of engineers have been dispatched to the communities to undertake maintenance work on drainage systems in the capital city. This is according to Tom Clark, Royston King. So we are on target with respect to our May-June rain, anticipated May-June rains. All of our uh, sluices are working, all of our pumps are working. So we wish to uh, assure citizens that with heavy rains, there will be no overtopping in the usual areas. There will be repairs to sluices in Meadowbank, Agricola, Rome and Lamaha streets and clearing of their inlet channels. Additionally, there will be clearing of six culverts that connect the North and South Rheinfeld drainage system. Also, there will be the desilting of drains and culverts in Sussex Street and the railway embankment from Sherry Street on the west to the pump station on the east. A total of $150 million was approved by Cabinet to facilitate the drainage works. Cabinet had accepted that the May-June rain causes extensive flooding to low-lying communities in the city and their approval is a sign that they intend to assist citizens to avert the looming floods. Sandy Ramutar for MTV's News Update. That's a wrap for MTV News Updates We Can Review. The newscast can be viewed online on our MTV's Facebook page and also on our YouTube channel. Join us Monday, May 8 for another edition of MTV News Update. On behalf of our news team, I am Trisha Ramlal, thanking you for watching.